Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today I'm not doing what I wanted to do. I already had a big plan. Somebody gave me a great idea. They wanted to see the CNC process from start to finish, from programming to how I get the code to the machine, setting up the wood, you know, planing it down, just preparing it to get cut, going over cutting it, painting it, sanding it, finishing it, the full works. So I would had a plan to do that. I thought up a little design that I was going to do. It wasn't going to be anything real complex, uh, but I was going to go through the whole process start to end. It'll probably be a little bit longer video, maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes. But that way, the people that don't totally understand the full process could see it. And so this guy has a CNC and was just wanting to kind of see what I did going through it. So I thought, man, that's an awesome idea. It started storming again today. Starting about, oh, two, three o'clock. We've lost electricity several times and enough times that I gave up and thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to get out there and be cutting and lose power because there's no pause button on the machine. Once you start it and it stops, why not take that back? There is a pause button, but what I mean is if you cut the power to it, I can't pick up where I left off. I have to start completely over. So rather than risk that and waste a whole bunch of time, I figured I'd talk about a little bit more process because I still have other questions that are asked a lot and I still haven't covered them great. So today we're going to talk about a few more CNC bits. When I do a Wahoo board, you guys have seen me. So you saw me doing that breast cancer awareness Wahoo board and you saw the bit just going through and just stabbing the hole. That's called a drill tool path. I do that with a one half inch ball nose. You can see it's a rounded bit. Now the ball nose isn't necessarily meant for that. When I do stuff that's 3D, kind of like when I did this horse, this 3D horse, that's what I use as a ball nose. Now I don't use a half inch one. I use either an eighth or a quarter. Usually it's a quarter inch bit. And it's the rounded tip like that. And it'll just sit here and pass back and forth over it. And you saw this one made. So that's the ball nose. The other bits you commonly see, commonly see me use when I do stuff are 90 degree V-bit, 60 degree V-bit, and the newly acquired 30 degree V-bit. So the 30 degree V-bit is what I did the half tone in. You remember it from a couple of weeks ago. I've been working on another one of those. I'm, yeah, I'll have one of those programmed up before long. These, the 90 degree V bit and the 60 degree V bit, they're going to do stuff more like this one. So the 90 is what I usually prefer to use. A 60 will get you a little bit smaller. Like if I would have done this lettering with a 60 degree V bit, probably would have been okay because it can go a little bit deeper and it's just a little bit thinner bit. It's not as wide. So whenever I'm doing stuff like this, Occasionally, you will see me break out an end mill. This is a quarter inch end mill, and whenever I've got a wide gap like that, I'll do what's called a clearing tool path. It'll run through here and just kind of take a swath through the meat of the big gap. And I didn't on this one, could have, and it'll just clear out as much as it can without getting into the detail. What, what it does, it cuts down the time on a V-carve toolpath that I do with a 90 degree V-bit, it just takes out, uh, not always half, but at least a quarter of the time that it would take to clear it out with a 90 degree V. So what that does is just, like I said, it just clears out the extra bulk to do all the detailed carving. So again on this one, the nice little border, and usually this is what I use to cut things out when I'm actually just cutting out a shape. This is also an end mill, but this is a 1 8 inch end mill. To give, put that in perspective, a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch. So, I mean, this thing's real small, and so I can really cut down the amount of waste whenever I'm using something like this. If I use something a little wider, I'm really wasting a lot of wood. I'm cutting a real wide band around things. So bits that I don't have here are, uh, there's some called drag bits. And so, like, if you were going to do plexiglass, you can use them, from my understanding, you use them to etch the plexiglass, and they're called a drag bit. 
if anybody knows about that stuff, shoot me an email at smokycnc at gmail. I'd be interested in trying it. I just have it yet. Uh, I just really hadn't looked that hard into working plexiglass with the machine. I was really leaning towards the laser, which I got asked about like three times this last week. I still have the CNC laser. I've just been lazy with the laser. I hadn't been up there messing with it. It's been summertime. I could come out to the shop all the time when it wasn't 4,000 degrees. And I just hadn't got in there and messed with it. I just need to get in there and just spend the time to figure it out. Because it is a good machine. I just hadn't played enough with it yet. When I do get it going, trust me, you'll know it because I'll be showing some of those videos too. Okay, now a couple of added extras. I'm over here in the CNC room now that I've talked a little bit about before, but not in a while. So one of the added extras that you guys don't usually see is this little jewel right here. This is an emergency kill switch. So if the machine messes up and just starts to do its own thing, which believe me, occasionally it does. And the way that happens is when I'm trying to run the machine too fast and I catch some drag and it starts slowing the machine down, and it'll start to skip and when it does that sometimes it'll just go off the rails and I mean it will just not literally off the rails it'll just turn and do its own thing and you got to be ready on the kill switch or you could actually damage the machine you could torque it and bend the rails so the other thing I've been asked about recently is uh, limit switches limit switches are switches that when say the gantry is sliding down the rails and it reaches a certain point it hits a switch and it stops the machine it's like an emergency stop I don't have them. If I did have them, they would be located right in this area here, so the gantry right there couldn't just slide right off the end. And I don't have them at either end. You might ask why I don't have them? Lazy. Once I got this thing built, I was just ready to work. So my limit switch is me. I, I just pay very close attention to how the machine's running, and I don't let it get that close to the end of the rail which again limits me on a little bit more distance it can travel, but it really hasn't been an issue for me. I think limit switches are a great idea. If you're gonna build a machine, I would recommend them. It's just that once I got it up and running, I was ready to roll and I just had never put them on. And honestly, it's never really caused me any big issues. The next one is uh, some of you people with a real sharp eye, whenever I've walked around my machine a couple of times, you've noticed a box. Okay, so what this box is, you see these two tubes running out of it. This box contains a fan. It sucks air in this intake right here and pulls cool air into my electronics box and my computer box over there. I was just simply trying to limit the heat. I've also got exhaust fans on both of these. Right there and right up here. Them to exhaust the heat out and keep the inside of those boxes fairly cool. Now, in that box over there that has the big fan pulling the intake in, I've got a filter in it. So I keep the sawdust out of it and it keeps everything pretty clean on the inside. Now then over time, it's still getting sawdust in there and it's getting about time that I have to go back in and blow this stuff out and just try to keep it as clean as possible. So guys, that's gonna be about it for this time. I know this wasn't gold and I didn't cut anything cool, but I can't, predict the Oklahoma weather. <laughs> I mean, this was a storm that we weren't expecting to pop up and it lasted for like I said, you know, six, eight hours and it's still lightning outside just south of us here and I'm just not gonna risk it. So I don't wanna get the machine all fired up and then risk that thing getting cut off mid stride because <laughs> it's a mess when it happens. I've done it before. So guys, that was just a few things that I'd not talked about. I'd talked about some router bits before, some uh, CNC bits and i've showed you most of them that i actually use on a regular basis wouldn't fill over a few things there on the machine these are just other things that people have asked for i still haven't covered them all but i'm getting closer and one day i'll just make me a great big list and just do it all in one video and hit everything i can think of just that way it answers a lot of questions so like i said on the next video i am probably going to try to do a process one where i go from computer to finished product all the way through it it'll be a longer video but i think it'll be a good idea just so everybody can see what the whole process takes now it won't reflect the actual time because i will of course cut it down but it will reflect every little step i go through 
So guys, that's going to be it for this one. If y'all hadn't ran over to check me out on Smoky Uncuffed, I'm on podcast. I've got a website and I'm here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to Smoky CNC Woodworks. And I'll see y'all next time.